Yeah, this is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. We thank God for each and every one of you tuning into the broadcast. You are tuned into Guts. God's going to say, everything's working together for my good. Everything. And I tell you, we definitely want to encourage and we want to say hi to everybody. Divine Design and all those who are in uh, listening in and who are tuning in. And we are grateful. Thank it to uh, we thank God for you all who are tuned in and who are listening up, and uh, we are grateful for uh, even those of you who would tune in and listen up. And I, I know that sometimes people uh, think that certain things are uh, funny to do, and I don't blame you for thinking so because everybody's mind is not always the same as everyone else's. Everyone doesn't have the same heart or the same thought pattern or the same delight in God or delight in one another or even a ability to know the different. Uh, but even with that, it reminds me, and, I, and I'm going to pray uh, for everyone's hearts and minds because it is working together for my good. All things are working together, and this is my season for grace and for favor. And even if I am depressed or if I'm finding myself in a under a spirit of depression because even though somebody wants to play games and that's okay, I'm praying for you that your mind would be right, that you would understand that uh, there are things that you shouldn't play with for those who are trying to play games. But I'm also praying and I'm also interceding and I'm also decreeing and declaring by faith even right now for people who are finding themselves under the spirit of depression because even though this is a season of grace and breakthrough. This is a season of giving. This is a season of joy. This is a season of peace. There are some people whose peace, who do not have peace, who are suffering from a lack of peace, who are under the uh, oppression and the spirit of oppression and are oppressed to the point of depression. And they are to the place where they would desire to kill themselves. Now, somebody was playing a game, but that's okay. Uh, it, it reminds me that there's people who I do need to pray for. And there's somebody out there that's listening because uh, the devil doesn't start stuff like that without there being a need for me to address. And so I'm going to address the need and dismiss the hoax, you understand. Uh, we thank God for uh, the foolery that goes on, but uh, I also thank God because God does not leave me without understanding. And there's somebody who's listening to this broadcast right now, and you've been consumed utterly with the spirit of depression to the point that you have been considering thoughts of suicide so much so that you've already planned out what to do. There's somebody also who's listening who probably has dealt with the suicide and this depression spirit and this cutting, the spirit of wanting to cut themselves and to harm themselves and to hurt themselves because they feel like it lets them know that they're alive. Uh, we're, you're listening to this broadcast now. You might not call in. And I'm not expecting you to because uh, that kind of thing would cause you to probably give away who you are. And some people are not to the point, free enough to the point to call in and say, it's me and I need you to pray for me. I want the deliverance that you're talking about. I need to be made free from that spirit of suicide, that spirit, that demonic spirit that's causing me to want to kill myself. That's causing me to want to play games about killing myself. That's causing me to want to pretend that I want to kill myself. That's causing me to tell people I'm just joking when really, bottom line is, I'm suffering deep in my spirit with this kind of battle that I can't seem to get over. Now, there's probably someone out there and you're listening. And I know that, again, you probably won't call in because uh, you don't want people to know it's you. That there's a shame that is associated with it. And that shame should be enough to let you know that it's not of God. Because if it was of God, you wouldn't be shamed. You'd call and you'd say, Lord, help me. I, I cry out unto you because I know that you are the one that is able to do and to deliver. And you are the one that is able to uh, get there. And we are grateful. We are grateful for the deliverance. And we're grateful for what God is doing. We are experiencing a time where we can decree and declare by faith. And God can touch the hearts and the minds for the battlefield is in the mind. We prayed for the mind earlier on this week. We prayed for 
people's minds. And I, I want to be more specific now. I want to pray for that mind that does not know right from wrong, that mind that doesn't understand truth from a lie, that mind that would try to be uh, complicated, that's confused, that befuddled, that mind that doesn't know where the beginning and the end is, that mind that is so outrageous that it decides that it would be better to end it than to continue on, that mind. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now. And I know they're listening. I know they're tuning in. I know they're uh, hearing what's going on. Uh, those that want to play games and those that don't want to play games. Those who are serious about what God is doing. Those who really do want a breakthrough and those who don't even know what a breakthrough is but just want to mock God. And God, you're listening. You're hearing and you're seeing everything. And by faith, God, because I know that you're the kind of God that sees, hears, and knows all things. And whatever's going on, whatever is being done, God, let it be done to your glory and to your honor. God, I need you now to demonstrate yourself strong in the earth that people would know, that somebody would get the victory, God, and that it is true that you care about us. And no matter what's going on, you love us and you care for us. Lord God, we speak into the spirit of those who are troubled, who are devastated, who are destitute, who will understand what season they're living in. God, speak a word of life into them. God, send someone their way that can speak a word of life to them. God, let your anointing touch them now. Let your Shekinah glory fill the room where they're at, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you know, and this is a serious time for me. I don't know what anybody else is thinking, but God, this is a serious time for me, and I rebuke anyone who may be tuning in and praying against or praying opposite of or doubting. We rebuke wrath, doubt, fear, indecision. We speak truth and life unto the people. Who are listening light love the very power of the holy spirit god's ever present presence that he would come with gifts that he would send that overshadowing anointing that would release all bondage that would remove all fear that would take that demonic spirit of oppression and depression and suicide and uh, confusion off of your people and God we ask that you would replace it with love a sound mind joy love a sound mind joy let them walk in love a sound mind and joy Lord God whatever it is that is the catalyst or the cause for the depression remove it from them now God cause them to walk in truth honesty transparency, deliverance, healing. Let your healing stream fall, flow down. Let your virtue fall down. Oh God, we thank you now. We give you the glory and the honor because it belongs to you, God. We are rejoicing and we are giving God the praise because we know, God, that you have handled the situation. All those who believe, all those who trust, all those who have faith, all those who are not playing with you, God have received their deliverance. And anyone who is playing with you, anyone who is doing something that's outside or wayward or becoming ridiculous or being insensitive to the spirit, God, if you would do as you did with Zachariah, halt their tongue. Cause them to recognize that you're not a play toy, you're not a play thing, you're nothing to play with. That you are God. And beside you there is no other. We thank God for you we give you glory and the honor in jesus name we pray by the power of the holy ghost thank you god amen and amen this time i gotta take a break we do thank god for uh, the prayer of intercession for those who believe we know that your deliverance is nigh. for those of you who are playing we know that god is going to reveal himself to you demonstrate himself because i know that god has a way of dealing with mockers and for those of you who have doubt we bind that down doubt now and we speak unto you the release of faith. I'm Nikki V, hoping you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. We'll be right back in just a moment. We'll be sharing with you a little bit more after this.
The International Fellowship of Christians and Jews presents Classic Moments from Friends of Israel. In 2010, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu delivered a speech in recognition of America's friendship and commitment to Israel. The Jewish state in particular owes a great debt of appreciation and gratitude to the United States. It has helped us bear the heavy burden of our Oh, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And yes, we are celebrating uh, because we know that God answers prayer. And we are grateful to each and every one of you tuning into the broadcast. You are tuned into Guts Gospel United Say, a variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. Getting back to our leadership series and talking about developing leaders among us, uh, leaders who are equipping others have the greatest responsibility or, and the greatest possibility 
of success. No matter what type of organization you're in, you will have more success if you equip others to do the job that you have, that are under you, to do that job. When a leader is dedicated to the equipping process, the whole level of performance within the organization rises dramatically. It doesn't just make them look good. Guess what? It also makes you look good. Everyone is better prepared to get the work done. More important, the best equipped people will be ready for the final growth stage that creates the very best leader's development. As Fred A. Mansk Jr. said, the greatest leader is willing to train people and develop them to the point that they eventually will surpass that leader in their knowledge and ability. And that's really the goal. We don't like to think of it that way, and we definitely don't want to think of it that way because everybody wants job security. But this is the thing. If you're doing it right, if you're really doing it right, then the person ought to be better than you when this story's over, when it ends, when we're finished. They ought to be better than you. You ought to want to make people become better than you. Understand me. All right. So the greatest leader is willing and able to train people that will surpass them. We're going to begin to delve into how to take that next step, how uh, the, le the leader's lifelong commitment to developing potential leaders. The growth and development of people is the highest calling of leadership. That's the highest place that we can be. That's the highest level we can approach is to be able to go to that point. And we thank God for you all who are tuned into the broadcast. Right now we're getting ready for a um, update from Harvest Reapers International School's ministry.